Hello and welcome to another video in my series of video classes for Eve University. I am Amoni Panala. You might know me as Zipporah Panala or Camille Panala, uh, depending on when you met me. Um, this is a, another recording of a class. Uh, since I am frequently asked to record my classes and I don't feel comfortable putting people in the class on the spot, I have decided to record classes for specifically this purpose so that people can go back and watch videos as they so wish. Today we're going to go over introduction to weapon systems and we're going to talk about uh, a number of things related to weapons. Um, so this is how you make things explode. Let's um, let's make this full screen. And uh, since there is no class, um, if you have questions, you can leave them as a comment on this video, and I will get to them as soon as I can. I can't promise to answer all questions, um, but I will do my best and uh, we'll go from there. So today we're going to talk about the different types of weapons, turrets, missiles, drones, and some special types of weapon systems. Uh, we're going to talk about the mechanics and the types. We're going to talk about the um, damage profiles for each of these. Uh, we'll talk about the unique mechanics related to them and all that good stuff. And of course, uh, at the end, if there are questions that come up, please do leave those as a comment on this video. So, uh, every faction sort of specializes in a couple different weapon types. So, for the Amar, we have energy weapons and drones. For Galente, that's going to be drones and hybrid turrets. For Keldari, that's going to be hybrid turrets and missiles. And for uh, the Minmatar, that's going to be missiles and projectile turrets. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can't put, uh, you know, uh, there might be some cheese fit where you put hybrid turrets on a um, Amar or projectile turrets on an Amar ship, whatever. But as a general rule, um, each of these different empires is going to use specific weapon types based on the bonuses that the ships get. Um, and so that's why we stick to these different weapon types based on uh, what empire faction the ship belongs to. Um, so let's talk about turrets. So turrets go in a high slot and they require a turret hard point. So when you open up your fitting window, you can see that there are hard points for missiles and turrets. And based on the number of hard points for turrets, that's going to tell you how many high slots you can fill with turrets. Now the damage from turrets is instantaneous. There's no, um, there's no delay. It is just instantly hits or doesn't hit depending on accuracy, uh, which is affected by tracking and range. Now, um, tracking, I want you to imagine, right, these turrets are sitting basically on a swivel, right? And that swivel can only move so fast, right? And that's based on your skills, that's based on the modules that you have fit to your ship, it's based on rigs, and it's based on implants. So all of these things are going to affect how well your turrets track. And as your target is moving around, this turret is sitting on a swivel trying to follow this target moving uh, around. Now, if it's further away, it's going to be easier to track, right? Depending on how fast it moves. But if it's close up, it's going to be even just moving slightly is going to make it harder to track because that distance covered is greater. And so it's going to have to swivel around more dramatically to keep up with the movement of your target. 
the way we keep track of this, the way that we talk about this in mathematical terms, we talk about it in terms of angular velocity. Um, we also use the term transversal, right? So technically, transversal and angular velocity are not the same, but you will often hear them referred to interchangeably, right? Um, so what we're what we mean when we use angular velocity is we're talking about the speed at which something is orbiting around you, right? Or moving around you. If your target has high angular velocity, meaning that it is moving quickly, it has it's moving at high speeds around you, it is going to be harder to hit, right? Your little turret on the swivel is not going to be able to keep up with the speed of your target. The way to get around this is something that is somewhat ironically and also seriously referred to as trans matching, right? So matching the transversal or angular velocity of your target. So going in the same direction, matching the speed and direction of your targets so that you are aligned with it. So that way, your little swivel turret doesn't have to do as much work as it tries to track your target. The other thing that you can do is slow down the enemy, and that requires using something like webs to slow it down. You can also use a warp scrambler to shut off their MWD. Of course, if they're using an afterburner, then, it, then a um, warp scrambler is not going to do anything. So webs are a must if you're going to slow down a target uh, to be able to hit it. The other thing that's going to affect it is the signature radius. Now, because we're this is not like a flight simulator game where we're sitting in the cockpit and we have like a simulation of like the targeting computer, it's kind of hard to remember this as being a thing, but the game is simulating the size of an object in space as it appears to the targeting computer on your ship, right? And that's your signature radius. That's the signature radius of the target you're trying to hit. Now, small ships are going to have a small signature radius. Big ships are going to have a big signature radius. Now, there are a bunch of different things that affect signature radius. So for example, micro warp drives. Micro warp drives cause the signature radius to look even larger, right? We call this uh, signature bloom, right? Um, causes the signature radius to become larger. If it is small, it's going to be hard to hit. If it is large, it is going to be easier to hit because your, your targeting computer can lock onto that target a lot easier. Now, there are ways to artificially make this signature radius larger, things like a target painter, okay? And we're uh, gonna talk a little bit more when we talk about missiles because you're going to get even better results when using missile systems uh, and target painters because that's going to affect application, right? Now, in terms of range, right, this is the, we talked about tracking and range in terms of being able to hit something. So there are two things when it comes to range, and that's your optimal and your fall off, okay? Now your optimal is the range at which you shoot something, and it doesn't matter how far within your optimal it is, that's not going to affect your ability to hit it. As long as it's within your optimal, you're good. Once a ship gets into your fall off range, you start to see diminishing returns on your ability to hit something. So at fall off, you have about a 50% chance of hitting something. Once you get beyond fall off, um, you're going to see a, a steep decline in your ability to hit something. And I see you know, on my presentation, it says 6.25%. I don't know how accurate that is because I'm not the numbers person that crunches these numbers, right? I just know from experience, right, that as 
the further into falloff that you get, the the uh, less you'll be able to hit something. And at, at a certain point, you're just not going to hit anything, right? Now, the way you can uh, mitigate this, right? The way to improve your range is with skills, right? You can you can train up skills that improve your optimal range. You can train up skills that improve your fall off. You can also use rigs, modules, and implants to improve your both your optimal and your fall off. Now, whether it's worth it to you is kind of depends on what you're trying to do, the context in which you fit your ship. Um, but those are, it is possible to increase your optimal range and your fall off range using a combination of those things. Now, some skills that you can train up to improve your, your turret skills, right? You can train up controlled bursts. Uh, this is going to give you a reduced capacitor need. Now, it is worth pointing out that certain, um, Turret systems, the project, namely the projectile turrets, do not require capacitor. Okay, um, so this is why it is a favorite among um, PvP groups because it doesn't take capacitor. That thing will keep shooting even if you have zero capacitor. It's awesome. Train up gunnery. It increases your rate of fire. If you're shooting more, you're going to do more damage, right? Um, motion prediction this increases your tracking right so this is improving the swivel on your turret that swivel is going to put in overtime if you train up motion prediction rapid firing also increases your rate of fire doing more damage sharpshooter increases your optimal range okay we just talked about this okay skills that can improve your optimal range sharpshooter is that skill Surgical strike, that's a straight percentage bonus to your damage, okay? If you can kill things faster, you don't have to worry as much about your optimal and fall off. If you can do more damage, that thing's going to be dead. Trajectory analysis, okay? This increases your fall off range per skill level. Um, Again, skills that will increase your optimal and fall off, right? This is sharpshooter and trajectory analysis. Um, training these skills up is definitely worth it. Now, you don't have to train these skills to five right away. Okay, that's quite a train. Um, but getting them to three or four is going to be uh, super good. And like gunnery, which is a one, uh, 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 one multiplier, uh, train that to five because that's going to be uh, immense returns on training that to five, okay? Um, let's see. Um, surgical Strike is a skill that you may not have right away, but you can get it through the eUni Skillbook program. Uh, you can find information about the Skillbook program on our wiki. Um, so if you do not, if you open up your skills and you don't already have surgical skill, uh, surgical strike, uh, do pick up that skill book um, following the skill book program guide and get reimbursed for that skill book. All right, so um, here's some graphs to sort of visualize what we're talking about here. Turrets. There are two types. There's the short range and the long range. So in the short range category, we have pulse lasers, right? This is the Amar weapon system. Blasters, which is going to be your uh, Galenta and Kaldari. Autocannons, which is going to be the projectiles. So that's Minmatar. Okay. These are your short range turret systems. Okay. Um, they do a low amount of damage on the initial strike or the alpha strike right? So the damage per shot is low. However, they have great tracking speed and the damage per second is high. So we talk about damage in two different ways. DPS, damage per second, and alpha. So sometimes you can have high enough alpha that you just pop something within the first shot or maybe the first couple shots, 
Okay, that's alpha. Um, but most of the time we're looking at DPS because we want to know how much damage per second are we doing because we aren't anticipating being able to pop it in one go. Um, so short range is going to be what you're looking at when you want to focus on damage per second. In the long range category, we have beam lasers. So that's your uh, energy turrets, Amar. You have rail guns, which is your hybrid turrets. That's your Galente Keldari. And then we have artillery, which is your projectile Minmatar. Okay. Um, now these are specifically, these do um, high alpha, right? So if you want to delete something, in your first shot, you're probably be, you're probably going to go with your long range guns. Um, now, the downside is they don't swivel too good. Um, these are these are weapon systems that don't track very well, um, and they also tend to have a low damage per section second. So the cycle time on these guns is longer but they have an increased amount of damage per shot. So it's a trade-off, right? If you think, if you are going for deleting things in one shot, the long range weapon systems is what you want to go for. All right, so let's talk about the Amar. Um, the Amar use energy turrets um, the short range is the pulse laser. The long range is the beam laser. These are power hungry little beasts. Um, they take up a lot of capacitor. Um, and that is something you need to keep in mind as you fit out ships with them because they are greedy, greedy, greedy for capacitor. Um, and one of the most effective ways to shut off an energy turret uh, weapons platform is to nude it out. Because if you nude out uh, a ship fit with energy turrets, uh, they can't shoot damage off. Now they have good optimal range, but limited fall fall off range. Now, obviously, if you're using beam lasers, you you are going to get better. Um, you are going to get better long range but you're still, what you're going to find is you have a good optimal range with limited fall off. Um, the range is just going to be higher. Um, now the ammunition for energy turrets, and this is why they're a favorite, is called frequency crystals. So frequency crystals are cool um, because your options can affect the um, how much damage they do and the range they do. They can also affect tracking, right? Um, so for example, switching to faction is generally, um, and this is not specific to energy turrets, but switching to faction is a good way to increase your tracking, right? And the reason why people like this energy system is because crystals generally, they don't, you don't run out of ammo. Um, not that you can't run out of ammo, but just that frequency crystals last a long time and then they break. So if you need a weapon system that you don't have to worry about ammunition, um, energy turrets are a great option for that. Um, you are, you are damage locked to EM and thermal. Um, so that's an important thing to know. So if the thing that you're shooting is specifically tanked for EM and thermal, you're going to have a rough time uh, because uh, the damage that you're dealing is going to be specifically tanked against. So keep that in mind. Um, but as I said, long lasting ammo, also instant reload. So if you are switching ammos, it's basically instantaneous. Uh, swapping between damage type or not damage types, but swatch swapping between your ammo's long range, short range, um, swapping between uh, T two and faction or, or T one and faction, right? Depending on what 
where your skills are at. Um, so those are the things to keep in mind about energy turrets. Um, as you can see here, this is sort of a breakdown of the different types of energy crystals that, or frequency crystals that you can find. Um, so you have multi-frequency, which is going to, um, it's going to be your short range option, right? It does uh, the most amount of damage, uh, but again, short range. So you're limited on range doesn't have any additional cap uh, capacitor. Um, as you work your way up, right? So working from multi-frequency to radio, right? Um, you are getting progressively longer range, but you're also trading off your capacitor and your damage. So for example, the next one is gamma, right? Uh, decrease in optimal, so this is still short range, but it also um, costs more in capacitor. It doesn't do quite as much damage. Um, when we get to, uh, let's say, microwave, right? Let's take a look at microwave, second from the bottom. So microwave has increased optimal range by 40%, but it also takes up 25% uh, capacitor. Uh, so this is a greedy, greedy uh, crystal frequency. Modest damage, right? So as you get, as you start uh, using, going out in range, you're going to do less damage, increased range, less damage. Okay. Also greedy on the capacitor. Okay. Hybrid turrets. Hybrid turrets are uh, one of the weapon systems for the Galente and the Kaldari. The uh, short range is going to be blasters. The long range is your rail guns. Um, they have a modest use of capacitor. Okay, they're kind of um, the middle ground. Now they have a modest optimal range and a average fall off range. Um, again, very middle of the road here. Now you can select your, you can select your ammunition for damage, range, and capacitor use. Um, you are damage type locked to kinetic and thermal. Um, there is also a reload time of five second so this is something to be aware of right so um with hybrid turrets you're getting you're getting middle of the road on everything and it does have a uh reload time um so let's take a look here same as before at the top we have the shortest range we have antimatter okay uh, reduced optimal range by 50%, no additional capacitor need, highest damage. Once you get out to like iron, tungsten, right? These are your long range ammos, increased optimal range, increased capacitor need, low damage. Okay, auto cannons. These are your Minimitar weapon system. Projectile turrets, uh, the short range is going to be your auto cannon, long range is artillery. Sorry about my voice there. All right, so there is no capacitor required for projectile turrets. Um, this makes them a favorite in certain contexts because you can mute them out and they will keep shooting. It's great. Um, now they have a limited optimal range. 
So projectile turrets are going to have your shortest optimal range. Um, they do have a decent fall off range. Your ammunition is going to affect your optimal range, your tracking, and your damage type. Um, you can select for any damage type, but you are going to be trading off range depending on what damage type you, you have. Projectile turrets also take the longest to reload, right? So here, 10 second reload, okay? Um, now that can be, um, if you've been in PvP fights, you know that fights can be over in a heartbeat, um, especially like your nano gangs and things like that. Um, that reload time can be the difference between life and death. So it's worth thinking about. And just to give you an idea here, so in the short range, right, we have EMP, phase, plasma, and fusion. These all have a decreased optimal range by 50%. They all do a specific amount of damage, and they each hit into a certain damage type. So EMP is going to hit into EM. Phase Plasma is going to hit into Thermal. Fusion is going to hit into Explosive. And they all hit into Kinetic. At the long range, we have Proton, Nuclear, and Carbonized Lead. Right? Each of these gives you a plus 60% optimal each hitting into a specific damage type with reduced damage, right? And then you have the titanium sabat and depleted uranium in the middle, okay? Let's talk about missiles. So missiles are the um, other big weapon system that goes in the high slot. Now, just like turrets, they require a hard point, but this time it's going to be a missile hard point. Uh, you are limited to how many uh, missile hard points you have in your ship. Uh, missiles do not require capacitor. Missiles have a travel time before applying damage. So missiles act like physical objects in space they travel they can be damaged and destroyed um, but they always hit their target within their range so if you have um, the way we figure that out is based on the uh, flight time plus or multiplied by the missile velocity um, now, just because they hit every time, as long as it's within their travel range, does not mean that you will get full damage every time. This is where the term application comes in. So damage is, is going to be affected by application. So smaller ships with a smaller signature radius that move faster probably not going to apply as well to those ships. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute here. So uh, just like with turrets, you have long and short range missile types. Ammunition alters the damage type. And unless you're using rapid versions, um, these are going to be long reloads. With rapids, you're going to have a um, you're going to have a weapons platform that is um, you're going to shoot increased. Uh, it's going to have an increase 
in the rate of fire, um, but you're going to have less ammo, and the reload time is going to be even greater. Okay, so you're trading off, you're going to be able to shoot a barrage of missiles, um, but you're also going to have a short amount of ammo and a long reload time. So in the long range category, we have light missiles, heavy missiles, and cruise missiles, right? These are your small, medium, and large. In the short range, we have rockets, heavy assault missiles, or also called hams, and torpedoes, okay? Now, as with turrets, you can train up skills to increase your performance with missiles. So, missile launcher operation, highly recommend giving this to five. It does not, it's a very short train, and it increases the rate of fire by 2% for each level. Rapid launch increases all launcher rate of fire by 3%. Warhead upgrades increases the missile damage. Missile bombardment increases the missile flight time, right? So this is going to impact your range. Missile projection increases the missile velocity. Okay, so this is the other half of our of our equation in figuring out the range of our missiles. Target navigation prediction reduces the impact of the target's velocity. Okay, guided missile prediction, precision, sorry, guided missile precision reduces the impact of the target's signature radius. Okay, so we talked about signature radius, we've talked about velocity, right? These are things that affect whether this ship is going to take damage or not. Small sig, sig radius, high speed, harder to hit, right? If it can get outside your range, if it doesn't, um, if it's smaller on your targeting computer, harder to hit. You can train up skills that mitigate that. Now, for turrets and launchers, you can train into T2. This is going to give you access to the specialization skill, which increases the damage per skill level. All you need is level one in the specialization to unlock the weapon system and the ammo associated with the T2 uh, launcher or turret. It does it, it gives you higher DPS, but it does have higher fitting requirements. It gives you better range and tracking. T2 ammunition is going to be cheaper than faction ammunition. And it's going to provide you with more specialized uh, options for what you are trying to do. Now, that doesn't mean you're never going to use faction ammo again when you start unlocking T2 damage uh, uh, ammunition types, but it's cheaper and it does more uh, with just those T2 ammunition types. T2 is cost effective if you have the skills for it. If you are thinking about whether it's worth it to train into T2, the answer is unequivocally yes. All right, drones. Drones are the pride and joy of Galente, and also to some extent, um, Amar. So drones are flying turrets, right? I mean, we have drones in the real world, so just imagine like a sci-fi version of the drones that we already have, right? Now drones work on the same mechanics as turrets, By default, drones travel to the target and then start shooting. 
Most drones do one type of damage, with the exception of augmented and integrated, which will do a mixed uh, variety of damages. I will say here, I know that sounds cool. However, augmented and integrated drones are more expensive. Drones can be targeted, and you can use Ewar on them, and they can be destroyed. We call this defanging. When you destroy a target's drones, you are defanging. You are limited by how many drones you can fit in your drone bay, as well as the bandwidth to launch and control a certain number of drones. So typically when we look at, at ships with a drone bay, we're also looking at the bandwidth. Ships that are meant to be drone boats, or ships that basically use drones as their primary damage type, are going to have a large drone bay and a large bandwidth to control several drones at once. Now, you can only have five drones out at one time, regardless of what your skills are, regardless of how good uh, the ship is, you're only going to have five drones out at any one time. However, some ships do not have the drone bay or the bandwidth to have five drones out at a time. There are also sentry drones, which are specialized, highly specialized drones that sit in one place once you deploy them, and they are basically snipers. Um, I love sentry drones. I am a huge fan of sentry drones um, especially as a logi pilot i put sentry drones in all my ships and i get great results uh, in getting on kill mails um, sentry drones are great um, but they are stuck in place so be prepared to lose them because chances are uh, unless you have a definitive victory you're not going to be able to pick them up again All right, so let's take a look at the drone types and their sizes. So there are light, medium, and heavy drones. And each, each Empire faction has their own contribution to the types of drones. So the Galente, they have Hobgoblins, Hammerheads, and Ogres, which do a specific type of damage. This In this case, it's thermal. They do have a reduced speed and tracking, right? So these are slower. They're a little bit tankier, but they are slow. And they do a uh, pretty decent damage, right? So this is a, why you will often see hobgoblins as a light damage type. Or, or as a as a light drone type, um, this is favored for their damage. The Kaldari have hornets, vespas, and wasps, which do kinetic damage, slightly reduced damage, and uh, they are a little bit slower, and they don't track as well as uh, the Amar or Mimitar. The Amar have the Acolyte Infiltrator and Praetor. They do EM damage with reduced damage, and they're a little slow and a struggle to track. The Minotaur have the Warrior, Valkyrie, and Berserker, and they do explosive damage. They are the Zoom Zoom. They're the Zoom Zoom Buddies. They go fast, but they don't do quite as much damage as their uh, as their competitors in the other Empire factions. So now on my chart here, it says you know it it gives you sort of a matchup: light drones to uh, frigates and destroyers. Um, 
medium for cruisers and battle cruisers, heavy for battleships. Um, you know, yeah, kind of, but to be honest, a heavy drone is very slow, right? It's a big, big drone and it moves very slow. So maybe you go with the mediums just to get a little more speed on those puppies. Um, or maybe you're Lodgy and all you can fit is light drones. That's fine. Even if you're going up against battleships. Now there are a couple of special weapon types. Uh, so smart bombs are point blank area of effect weapons. So these radiate out from the ship that is equipped with the smart bombs. It does damage to all objects up to 7.5 kilometers around the ship. And it does a single damage type and you'll be able to tell by the name. So like, um, EMP is going to do EM damage, right? Um, plasma is going to do thermal, right? Uh, these are particularly great for, um, these can be used offensively to destroy things like um, capsules. You can also use them defensively to destroy missiles, right? Remember how I talked about missiles being actual objects in space you can use smart bombs to blow up missiles if the missiles hit the smart bomb before they hit their intended target they will most likely die and you can reduce damage by using smart bombs that way we also have bombs just regular old bombs they are ranged untargeted area of effect weapons which you can only use in null sec and wormhole systems they can only be used by stealth bombers they do a single type of damage right and they're color coded to make it easy so the red ones do thermal blue ones do em yellow ones do explosive and the gray ones do kinetic um, there are also e-war bombs the void bomb and the focused void bomb which um, wipe out capacitor for um, subcap and capitals respectively now i say untargeted and i want to explain that a little bit bombs basically sit in the launcher on your ship and I want you to imagine like a big carrier ship, like um, imagine like carriers in the real world, right? Carrier airplanes, right? And how they have those big bay doors and you could in theory push something off of it, right? That's essentially what you're doing with these bombs. You move in the direction of your target, launch the bomb, and it just sort of falls out of the launcher in the direction that you're moving. And then after a certain, at, at, at a, after a certain amount of time, it just blows up. That's basically what a bomb does. Um, they do a high amount of damage. They're really fun, um, but they are use case dependent. And then we have the Vorton projectors and disintegrators. Now these are two very unique types of uh, weapon. Um, the Vorton projectors are fit to Eden Com ships, right? Probably the these are the newest type of weapon systems. They fire essentially what is chain lightning, right? It strikes a target and then bounces to another target up to four targets, which can be ships or drones, uh, within 10 kilometers of the first target, they deal EM and kinetic damage. 
disintegrators, which have been around for a little bit while longer, those are triglavian. All right, lastly, we have the disintegrators, which work on a similar principle to the turrets, right, with tracking range and all that good stuff. Um, they fire a particle beam, right, which spools or increases its damage over time. So the longer that you're shooting at a particular target, the higher the damage is. So we call this spooling because the damage ramps up over time. And as long as you don't switch targets, switch ammunition, or do anything to stop shooting, your damage will go up and up and up until it reaches the damage cap. Disintegrators deal thermal and explosive damage, and you can change ammo types to increase your range or increase your tracking. Okay? Now, let's talk about ammo. So it's generally a good idea to carry a couple different types of ammo. Um, if you are skilled in T2, you're going to want to have some faction ammo because faction ammo is going to get better tracking. Um, if you are still using T1 and faction ammo, it's a good idea to have a couple different types of ammo so that you can get longer range or better tracking depending on what ammo types you're using, right? Um, it is also a good idea, especially with like projectile ammo, to pick ammo that fits the resistance profile. So, you know, if you're doing PvP and you know who you're going to fight, it's a good idea to pick the resistance type that is most likely their vulnerable or weak point, right? And you can find that out by looking at Z-Kill, looking at the kinds of ships they fly, the kind of fits they use. Um, you can also use the wiki, right? So if you're doing PvE and you're shooting some rats, you can look at what resistances they have. What's their weak point? And use that, that damage type to hit right into their, um, we call this a resistance hole or just the, 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 the hole, right? Hit into that resistance hole and you will get better results, more damage per shot doing that. Um, you can save money in PVE by using T1 ammo. Now there are times where it's gonna pay off to actually use faction or even T2 ammo. But keep in mind that if you're doing a lot of PVE, that ammo cost is going to add up. So be sure that whatever ammo you're using, it's worth the price. Make sure that you're recouping those costs and that it's not just eating up all your profit. Empire Faction Ammo is a good investment when doing PVP. Better tracking, better damage, okay? Definitely be using faction ammo in PvP. Pirate faction ammo, my presentation says it's usually not worth it. Here's what I will say. It is a use case only thing. There are definitely times where pirate faction ammo will be greatly increase your ability to kill things and kill it dead. But generally you don't need to go out and buy pirate faction ammo. So now that we've reached the end of 
the presentation. If you have questions, please do leave them in the um, leave them as a comment to this video. I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Um, I so appreciate the questions that I get in classes and um, be sure that if you enjoyed this video to like it. If you want to keep updated on videos that I put out, uh, I do also put out PvP fight videos, um, big C5 wormhole brawls. Um, if you'd like to keep up to date on the classes and PvP fight videos, be sure to subscribe and maybe share this video with a friend who wants to learn more about the weapon systems in EVE Online. Until then, I wish you nothing but the best. Fly safe, my friends.